The fact is that you're essentially being paid to use your brain and your brain is the asset that you're bringing to work. The more you understand about the preferences of your brain, the more you can get out of it. The main issues relating to neuroscience in our brains that impact the modern workplace are lack of sleep and constant distractibility from devices, from other people, from information overload, and from really being switched on 24-7. And there's a really exciting new field of research called epigenetics. Certain lifestyle behaviours switch on and off the expression of some genes. So for example, if you have the genetic tendency to become obese, then if you exercise a lot and eat really healthily, that might not get switched on. But if you sit on the couch a lot and eat junk food, then it's more likely to become expressed in the way that the genes had the tendency to. Another really interesting piece of research around social contagion shows that the group of people that we spend the most time with also has an impact on things like obesity and divorce. So if in your peer group, most people are overweight, then you are more likely to become obese in the next year. If in your group of close friends and family, someone gets divorced, then it's more likely that you will. The fact that that becomes socially acceptable has an impact on your decision making. There's a lot of curiosity and uncertainty around what the modern workplace will look like over the next five years or more. From the neuroscience point of view, I think the thing to look out for most is that it's likely that we'll be working in mixed robot and human teams within the next five years. Now, this is going to have consequences for managers and leaders who suddenly have to start working with the discomfort that that may create. But it's also something worth thinking about for yourself, about how will you do things differently if you have a colleague that's a robot? And which aspects of your cognitive power do you really need to build to the fore to survive and thrive in that kind of new and different environment? I really believe that technology can be used for good, but it's a case of being mindful about what you're letting technology do to you and making sure that it's more a case of you using technology to make yourself more productive, to be more connected, and it's not the case that you're mindlessly allowing technology to make you actually lonelier or less productive than ever.